Good morning, everyone. I'm so super excited to be here, and thank you for coming and joining for this session. We're going to get very technical this one. I want to help you understand how to use Postman better and show you a couple of things that you may not know, hopefully you may not know, that you can do with Postman. Uh, yeah, you can just call me Valentine if you have any questions. Um, so let's get started. Now, Postman can be used for a lot of things, and nowadays everything is an API, and with an API you can do everything, so not only use it at work, to test some business cases, but you can even use it to order pizza. But let's skip such a discussion of what you can do with Postman, because you already know you can do so many things with Postman and get really into the bits and pieces of Postman. So I'm going to start with a couple of things within the Postman app, because we are here at the Postman user conference. Everybody is using Postman. So let's see if there are a couple of things there that you can improve. Now, Probably most of you are using variables uh, in their requests in order to make things a bit dynamic. And you already know you can put variables basically everywhere. You can add them in headers. You can add them as query parameters. You can add them in the address. So they are everywhere. But there's one additional place where you can use variables in the request. And you can even replace the HTTP verb and put a variable in there. So if you have a use case where you're using the exact same request uh, for a put or a post request, and you just want to reuse that and switch, just use a pre-request script, set that variable to whatever you need, and you're good to go, and you do not need to duplicate that stuff. Um, and because you are here to learn new stuff, you you're, came from your company, and you're going back work Friday or Monday, you want to bring a couple, of, a couple of things back with you to your team. And if you really want to drive your colleagues crazy with a couple of stuff, uh, you, I invite you to learn about nested variables. And they can be used like this, and they totally work. I'm wondering, uh, they get resolved from inside out. I'm wondering if somebody wants to take a guess what's the value that will be outputted from there. Anybody? Come on. Very good. I don't have any t-shirts for you or something like that, but <laughs> maybe the Postman team can help you with something. Yeah. So I'm not sure how useful this is, but yeah, as I said, it's nice sometimes to have a bit of fun with Postman as well. Uh, a problem that I had in the past, even though I've been using Postman for quite a while, is like switching between workspaces. So I was like switching like crazy. I'm working in multiple workspaces at the same time. I was like wanting to look up information uh, in another workspace, and that was taking a lot of time. So now, after wasting some time uh, with the part of practical jokes, uh, this is a productivity tip. So this is actually something I did not know Postman can do, and actually can open multiple post Postman instances and have them on your computer and then switch between them and have, for example, different workspaces so you don't have to do this manual switch all the time. OK, we're going to get into scripting. So. Hang on, the, the break is coming, don't worry. But yeah, we, this, is, this is where the power is. So scripting is the power of Postman. And usually you write tests, if you write tests, in the test tab. So after the request had been sent and the response is available, you can write assertions. But sometimes it makes sense to write some tests on the request. And of course, you can put those tests in the test tab, works fine. But you can even use the pre-request script part to write tests if you have some assertions to do there. And I think that can be a very interesting separation to have like what's happening before uh, with a request and what's happening with a response to put them in separate places if you have like a lot of tests and the, the real estate in Postman is getting crowded. Um, one common issue when writing tests is when something fails, you get stuff like this and then Nobody knows what's going on. And you've seen, uh, if you joined the works, workshops yesterday, uh, you probably already know about the Chai Assertion Library. And using the Chai Assertion Library, this is built in in Postman so that you can use it instantly. And everything what I'm talking about here is actually you can do it. You can do it tomorrow and implement these things. And instead of just having the last assertion that I have there, JSON data customer name to equal John, you can go a step beyond that and check first, is customer an object? And does it have a property name? So when somebody's reading this test, 
and this test fails, it's pretty easy to understand what has happened, why did it fail, instead of undefined something, I don't know. And in order to really master these things, to understand how you can improve your tests to make them more readable and more understandable for anybody looking at them, is to get familiar with the child search library. And they have a very nice online documentation that you can use. Just Google child search library. This is built in in Postman, and all you have to do is to replace expect with pm.expect, and all these examples that you'll find there work. And I'm sure just invest half an hour to go over this documentation, and you'll be able to have such more improved tests than you have currently. So definitely a good thing to do. Sometimes when you're working at a with APIs and you're writing tests, things don't work. And you might need to skip tests. And if you don't know about skipping tests, you may be tempted to simply remove the test or to comment the test out. And that's a way to go. You can do that. The problem when you do that is that you lose track of how many tests are there that are currently not working, or maybe they are not working in a certain environment. So what Postman allows you to do is to simply add that skip, so PM test skip, and they will be reported as skip tests. So you will be able to keep track when you're looking, when you're doing continuous integration, or you're running the test in an automatic way, you will be able to have an overview how many tests are they skipped, so that later you can go back to those tests and see, understand why are they skipped. Maybe there's a comment there. They, maybe they need to be fixed. Or maybe just conditional skips. Maybe you want to skip tests on production, but run them on the test system. And that's totally fine. But keep this option to have the report. Keep this option to have an overview of what is there. And don't just remove that information from out there, because it's quite, quite easy. And additionally, when writing tests, you don't always want to wait for Postman to tell you that an assertion has failed, or something doesn't work, or to get some really weird errors that you don't understand. Maybe if at one point in your code you decide uh, this test doesn't make sense anymore, then just, just tell Postman to fail this test and use pm.expect fail and give a reason why this failed, why, where this happened, so that you can identify it in your code. And yeah, you're good to go after that. Is this too advanced? Is this good? Everybody following? I know it's morning, but yeah. We have, we have to improve our tests. Come on. <laughs> we have to do better. OK. Um, it's going to get even more complicated. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, ES6. What's ES6? Um, ES stands for ECMAScript. ECMAScript is the specification for JavaScript, and JavaScript is the thing that we write our tests in. And understanding that. JavaScript itself has versions, and that newer things happen over time, it's quite important. And currently, when you're working with Postman, if you just get started, you will notice that the snippets generate some code. And that is a bit earlier version of JavaScript that is generated there. It's called ES5, and that is already like 10 years old. It works still fine. It's totally OK. But I just wanted to say, hey, there's newer stuff out there. And even ES6 is not like super brand new. This is from 2015. But ES6 has introduced so many changes to JavaScript that can make your code work and look better. And yeah. And you can use ES6 in Postman today and even later versions of, uh, of JavaScript for that reason. So here's a sample, a simple example. This is a test that you can generate with Postman in two clicks. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but you can also write it in this way. And as you can see, you can leave function behind, and you have this arrow function, and you can even replace, remove completely the curly braces, and you can have a single line. Of course, if you need multiple assertions in multiple lines, you can introduce the curly braces as well. But if it's just one single assertion, you can write it much simpler in this way. The same goes with strings. Uh, I guess anybody writing tests in Postman uses the console to debug stuff. And debugging without actually seeing some dynamic data from variables is rarely useful. So what happens a lot if you want to have multiple information in, in your console, you have to create these strings and then 
close the codes and plus sign and insert variable and so on. And in ES6, you can do this thing called string interpolations. And you should notice that right at the beginning of the string, there's a backtick, so it's not a normal quote in order to get this to work. And uh, you will see in the example how the variables are supposed to look like. It can be, of course, functions or anything else. But this allows you to work a bit easier with ES6 and with your own code. And these are just some examples on, from ES6. I highly recommend that you just Google ES6 features to see how you can improve your code on your own, just teasing you a bit with what you can do. Another feature that you may see is uh, called object destructuring. What happens a lot is that you may get a response from somewhere and you want to extract some variables from that response. And in ES5, what you will normally do is you have the response variable and you have to initialize each property with each value and that can be a bit time consuming and ES6 allows you to use this special syntax in order to just copy paste those uh, properties from the response in this case. And you also notice that uh, ES6 has stuff like const and let, but I will let you discover those on your own. They're definitely a better practice of using those instead of simply using var. Okay, we're almost there. Last example. It's gonna get a bit crazy now, but just hang on for a second. This can really improve your life, trust me. So the way we have traditionally built request in Postman is that um, we had a body and that was a JSON in the JSON format and we sort of, uh, if you wanted to generate some dynamic data, we would probably do something like this. So if I want to generate a random product ID, I would most likely define a variable called product ID one, product name one, and so on. And for this example, this would work. There are eight variables, it's not so, optimal, but it definitely works. But what happens if you want to add even more dynamic things to your request body? What if in the previous request you wanted to send four products, but in the second request, using the exact same request, you want to send just one product? Or you just want to send an empty array? And using this traditional structure in Postman of just replacing some variables when you need dynamic data, doesn't work so well, doesn't scale with this kind of needs. So the solution is quite simple, and I'm sure you're all gonna get this. It's very, very easy. First step, we just need to replace the entire request body with a variable. So we don't play with the request body anymore. We just need one variable, okay? Simple. Step number two, we go in the pre-request script and you will see in this case, I have defined this array body. It's currently empty, that's fine. But here in the pre-request script, you can do whatever you want with that JavaScript object. You can add properties, you can add arrays, you can, whatever functionality you need in order to create a complex request can be done from the pre-request script. So it's all JavaScript. If you understand JavaScript, you understand how you can build complex request bodies in Postman. And the only thing you need to add is to set a variable in Postman so that you can resolve that in the body and to use json.stringify so that JavaScript object that you have is transformed in a JSON string that then can be sent over the wire. So how would I solve this problem? One way to solve it is using a generator function and this is another topic that is part of ES6. I know the code looks a bit crazy, but you will still notice two things that remained similar to the previous one. I'm still defining the body as a variable, and I'm still using JSON stringify in order to transform that in JSON. And what I'm doing is I'm using this product generator, sort of like an array, but which is dynamic, and I'm iterating over it and pushing in my array products. And in that function, I have just added some randomness in order to make this dynamic. But the way you want to have it is totally up to you. So this is just a simple example on how you can use it, but the main idea remains the same. Just use the power of JavaScript in order to create like really, really complex stuff. And yeah, 
to have the entire power of both men only for you. Hope you've learned something new, and yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>